Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of White Coat Wednesday. I'm Hallie, a fourth year medical student here at UQ Oshner, and today our special guest is Miss Sarah Chisholm. Sarah, would you like to tell the group a little bit about yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. I'm from uh, New York, and I went to college in Boston. I um, am applying to OBGYN this uh, match cycle, and a few of my interests are I have uh, two little cats at home who I love very much, Simba and Luna, and um, I have a strong uh, passion for ovarian cancer research, which I did before coming to UQ Optioner. That's wonderful. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about your research background? So after I graduated from college, I spent two years uh, working at Mass General Hospital, which is in Boston, and got really involved with ovarian cancer research. And that's kind of how I, um, it sparked my interest in going into OBGYN. Um, and, you know, working with the doctors there really kind of pushed me to go into medical school and work with patients and watching their interactions with, um, you know, a lot of these women who have very serious uh, conditions and um, listening to them talk. And it really kind of inspired me to go into medicine and um, apply for OBGYN. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And so you are one of the leaders of the palliative medicine group. Can you tell us a little bit about what is palliative medicine? Yeah. So uh, if you talk to a lot of the palliative medicine doctors here, they kind of summarize it as a you know, an extra layer of support for the patient and the patient's families. Because a lot of the times you're dealing with very complicated um, diagnoses and chronic conditions and even, you know, end of life care. And what palliative medicine does is kind of address all of the issues that you might be having, um, whether it's pain management, symptom management, um, pretty much, you know, anything you might need. And really talking to the families and the patients about, what they value and um, you know in their in their lives and kind of focusing on treating and helping them through throughout that process. So that's wonderful. And how does your interest in palliative medicine align with your interest in um, gynecology and women's health? Yeah, great question. Um, I actually didn't really uh, know that this was a specific specialty until coming to um, uh, Auctioner. I was talking to one of the uh, previous leaders of the palliative med groups last year. We were just having some lunch and you know, I was kind of talking about what I value in medicine and how I see myself practicing as a physician and um, talking a little bit about gynoc and um, uh, treating you know, oncology patients, and he kind of summarized it saying, you know, this sounds a lot like palliative medicine, or a lot of the skills you learn in palliative medicine applies to why I find um, medicine so rewarding. Um, so that's how I kind of got involved and, and learned a lot more about palliative medicine, and, you know, there's a lot of um, resource out there to learn about palliative medicine. Um, there's actually a, um, I think it's called why no gyno i'm i'm gonna have to look back and see what that was but it's a podcast by an OBGYN who's also now a palliative medicine doctor and he kind of talks about the importance of you know really understanding the patient's values and and what you know their their expectations are and, and being able to have these difficult communication skills and so very nice. Thank you. Thank you for answering that. Mm -hmm. And so as a relatively new group, um, can you explain you know, what the palliative medicine interest group mm -hmm. does? What type of activities do you have? Mm -hmm. Group meetings, yeah. things like that. So this is only our second year as an official group. Um, and, you know, we're, we're still kind of evolving and trying to figure out what, how we can incorporate more activities into our group. Right now, we've been doing a lot of uh, lecture series where, you know, we find topics that we think would either benefit us you know, as medical students for our future or um, topics that we just find very interesting. Um, one of our recent lectures was on pain management and talking about uh, prescribing opioids and multimodal pain management um, with one of our palliative medicine specialists here. 
uh, and we're also running a communication workshop bi-weekly with Dr. Cobell, which is very exciting. Um, we get to kind of practice the SPIKES protocol that we learned our first year of medical school in Australia, uh, which we really only had like one or two chances to practice. Um, but, you know, I really felt that that was a, something that was a little bit missing in our curriculum and wanted to kind of practice outside of and, and get feedback from our fellow classmates. So. That's great. You know, I, I definitely agree with your statement. I think the aspect of, you know, having difficult conversations in a palliative framework with many patients is something that we are encouraged to do as students, but it's also something that is a fine art to learn. Right. So I think that's wonderful that the, the group is able to learn from um, physicians who have been through the process and pass on their knowledge yeah. to the new generation. That's yeah, that's what we're trying to do it bi-weekly, uh, just to keep up with, you know, or the skills that we learn, and, and so. That's but fun. definitely open to more you know, ideas and suggestions. And yes. So. What can we see from the group in the future in terms of activities or okay. um, social events, mm -hmm. things like that? Yeah, so we're still kind of, you know, we, we're trying to do a lot of things uh, in the beginning, but due to restrictions, we weren't really able to meet outside of you know, certain, certain areas. Um, so we are trying to organize a volunteer experience where um, it's a program called No One Dies Alone. I'm still working on the um, kind of, the, working out the obstacles for it, creating a protocol, because uh, we do want to create a safety net for our students as well. We don't want, you know, anyone to feel like they're kind of left on their own. So um, we are working through that and hopefully we can get it up and running for the next the next class. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for talking to us today about mm -hmm. the palliative care interest group yeah. and about your background and kind of your experiences, kind of choosing a specialty for you. Um, and thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, remember to tune in next week to the next White Coat Wednesday. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>